watching Talk Talk, presented by United All Sales. And a good evening. Thank you for joining Gamecock. Chalk Talk. It's time to really talk some football, X and O, break down. Yeah, really, we have game film. Game one in the books, the Gamecocks go to Bank of America Stadium, get a big win over North Carolina. I know everybody said, oh, it was an ugly win, and they didn't play good. But the bottom line, there's one stat that counts, wins and losses. They got one in the W column. That's all that matters. We'll talk about it. There's some issues. Yes, we'll talk about that. Connor Mitch getting his first start. How did he perform? We'll get into all of that good stuff. Will he be ready to go this next week with the hit point? We'll talk about it. We're going to get you covered right here on Gamecock Chalk Talk. Joining me right now, J.C. Sherbert, 24-7 Sports, TheBigSpur.com. And J.C., they went on the I don't say, well, they did go on the road, but it's a neutral site game. And they got a win with Connor Mitch. He's 1-0 as a starting quarterback at South Carolina. And we'll talk about all the other stuff because I know folks are like, wait a minute. But, again, they won the football game. It was ugly. It wasn't pretty. I heard somebody even on the airplane tell me that, oh, they gave you gave South Carolina a game. I don't believe in that. Sometimes defense has something to do with that, those two interceptions by Sky Moore. But, again, the Gamecocks get a quality win and win the battle of the border. Exactly, and, and I think you can make an argument it was a game, if you're North Carolina, you probably think you should have won, and, and that's that's the truth. North Carolina, you know, outplayed South Carolina for most of the ball game. You know, that being said, I think there's something to be said, Corey, uh, about pulling a W mm -hmm. out, especially in the first game of the season. Think about this, Vanderbilt is on South Carolina's schedule. Vanderbilt loses to Western Kentucky. Uh, UCF is on South Carolina's schedule. They lose to FIU. Um, you know, you look around the country, look at Penn State and James Franklin. They lost to Temple by 17 at the Eagles Stadium. There are teams around the country that laid eggs in their first game of the season, and you would rather be in a situation where you're 1-0, didn't play well, can go back and correct and get better, because most teams do improve quite a bit between game one and two, uh, than 0-1 and already kind of getting into a hole. So I, I think that that's the key is that you did win the game. Well, let's look at the positive. The positive was – Connor Mitch, the numbers was ugly, 9 for 22, but he did not throw an interception. He did not turn the football over. Uh, Farrell Cooper did catch a touchdown pass. You can see that on a nice little drag route right there. Of course, he tried to get him involved in the game. North Carolina did some things uh, to kind of limit him and take him out of the game. But I think when you look at Connor Mitch and his play, uh, it was solid but not great. But this right here was my MVP. Sean Carson came out of nowhere, the third running back on the depth chart. This 48-yard touchdown scamper to the end zone. Turned things around for the Gamecocks, J.C., and got that running game mentality going. Coach said he probably should have played even some more. Uh, definitely. I, I think if you're Sean Carson, that's exactly what you do is when you get a chance to come in, you run very hard, and he certainly did. And I think that was a difference. I, I think, too, you know, Coach Spurrier after the game said, I didn't call a very good game. The play calling wasn't really all that good, blah, 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 blah. You know, and that's fine if he wants to say that, but I disagree. I, I think that this was a situation where you had an offense that was out of rhythm, out of sync, wasn't used to playing with each other, very inexperienced, uh, and you threw everything but the kitchen sink at the right. Tar Heels. You know, they had five different players, Corey, take snaps from center out of the Wildcat or Connor Mitch or Perry right. Orth or other. You know, that's, that's throwing everything out there. And, and I think that bad play callers, are the ones that are stubborn and stick with what they do no matter what and don't try to win the game. The great play callers, I think, sometimes say, well, this isn't going to work, so we need to go do something else. You do everything you can to win, right. and I think they did it. So is the offense uh, a, a side of the ball that has some issues? Absolutely. But I think that, uh, you know, moving forward, uh, there were some positives they could Well, take. the big positive, they ran the football for 254 yards in this football game, the ground and pound was working. The passing game was not there. Let's just be honest about it. Connor Mitch going to have to get better. I think he's going to have to protect a little bit better. But you can see he was not comfortable with the football, although he did have a couple of drop balls uh, that should have been completions. But I think they got to get better at throwing the football. There's no, uh, I'm not telling you something that you don't know if you watch the game. Well, Connor Mitch, as I told you, 9 for 22, did not play well, but he even had some quality plays. I, actually, I was impressed with his wheels. I think he could run the football very nicely. Uh, but has to work on his passing game. Here's what he had to say following the game. I'm just getting the uh, uh, victory in general is, is uh, a good feeling. Uh, hopefully we can keep going from here and just keep getting better and stronger. Well, despite the win, Steve Spurrier is excited about it. Yeah, ugly, but he says this team has a long way to go. We've got a long way to go. Yeah, we, we've got a ways to go. we we got to maybe be a little bit more conservative or – uh, we know we can run the ball, though. We, we can run the ball, so we got to keep doing that. 
They do, JC, and we just basically been talking about they have a long way to go. Uh, after game one, you do see a, a vast improvement between one and two. Uh, but when you look at this offense, let's stay right there. We'll talk defense in just a moment. But uh, this offense, Brandon Wiles, Sean Carson, David Williams, was really disappointed with how he played. He had some holes and some gaps. I think his vision was off running the football. That's why you saw probably Sean Carson get some carries. I do think they're going to have to really get, uh, you know, uh, the tight ends more involved in this ball game. Uh, and, and, of course, with the wideouts, with guys banged up and hurt, fair Cooper, that people are going to take them away. Somebody has got to step up and take the pressure off Connor Mitch. Yeah, South Carolina right now has issues with depth at the receiver. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to put it. You know, Carlton Hurd, uh, you know, great special teams player, mm -hmm. had a great block on the touchdown. South Carolina runs a reverse to him in the first quarter. I thought it was the worst use of personnel uh, I've seen in college football in a long time because that's not a guy that's going to make that play for you. So some other guys have to step up in that receiving core. South Carolina's had a lot of misses in recruiting at the receiver position over the years. They're not thin. Mm -hmm. You know, Jalen Christian, DJ Neal, those guys need to be coached up so they can get those more talented players in the rotation mm -hmm. or they are going to struggle. Uh, I'll say this. I thought Connor Mitch ran the ball well. Like you said, mm -hmm. I was impressed with that. I think David Williams is a much better player than he showed uh, on Thursday night. And maybe having a little competition from mm -hmm. Sean Carson will help him. Uh, you know, I think the Gamecocks offensive line, played pretty good you know I, I thought it would be a much more consistent unit than last year and it looked like they played that way no sacks allowed uh, with a first-time starter at quarterback with Chiswick trying to dial things up and confuse you know I thought it was impressive so you know there are some positive things it looked a little ugly on Thursday night but a, there's been a lot of opening games mm -hmm. that have looked ugly and the offense has been fine here during the Spurrier era. Well, you got to find a positive. The positive, you got the win despite playing ugly. That's a positive. When we come back, a positive for the defense. Is there some? We'll talk about it after the break. You're watching Talk Talk, presented by United Auto Sales. It's Gamecock Chalk Talk right here on Watch Fox 57. Now it's time to get defensive. The Gamecocks, uh, the defense was a big question mark. John Hoke, the new coordinator coming in, taking on Gene Chiswick, new coordinator for North Carolina. Which defense would hold up? Well, it turned out it was the Gamecocks, J.C. defense that held up. Why? Because they were good in the red zone. North Carolina moved the ball. They gave up 440 yards of offense, over 200 rushing, 200-plus passing, but it was the play in the red zone. There were some bad defenses. So one of the things that I saw was the defensive line still not getting off those blocks. You know, when you play that zone read team, you got to get guys off of blocks or you got to get them in the backfield. Penetration kills any type of zone read. Number two, the secondary. I wasn't impressed with the secondary at all. I think they got to tighten it up, Jason, especially this week against Kentucky. And number three, uh, there were some missed tackles and bad angles. One of the touchdowns that North Carolina scored, terrible angles by the secondary. So when you look at that, we're going to get to the good folks. Don't worry about that. But that was the bad for me of the South Carolina defense. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think the de I think the defensive line has improved tremendously in terms of personnel. They didn't get uh, Dante seconds. Sawyer can play. I think we saw Marcavius Lewis can play. Kelsey Griffin can play. I mean, I would consider trying to get Kelsey Griffin and Dante Sawyer on the field at the same time at yeah. defensive tackle. Both those guys are really good players. Uh, so if you look at it from that standpoint, I think we saw that the personnel's better, yeah. even in the second. Uh, what I think happened with some of those plays is uh, missed assignments, mm -hmm. new scheme, guys getting sort of outflanked, guys not having the mental part of the game down. John Hoke after the game, uh, you know, said they made a lot of mistakes, and, and they did. Mm -hmm. And so the question now is how much of what we saw from the Gamecock defense Thursday night, giving up the long yardage and the big plays and all that, is because of the mental part of it, is because of learning a brand new scheme, uh, and how much is it that this – unit or this defense still isn't coached at a high level or talented enough to play at a high level. I think we'll find that out. Uh, but yeah, I think there were some extreme positives. I mean, I think yeah. anytime uh, you're a defense that struggled, when you can win the game for your team, I think that's huge in terms of a momentum thing. And I think it'll carry over to Saturday night against well, Kentucky. Well, better than last year, of course, they gave up games like that many yeah. times. Well, here's Lorenzo Ward. I had a chance to ask him about the defensive line. They had four sacks in the ball game and about giving up yards that bend but don't break defense. Here's Whammy. And that's what we, we talked about all, you know, well, we didn't want to give up the chunk yards by no means. And that's something that we got to we got to clear up. But, yeah, you know, we wanted to make sure that, you know, we try to keep them uh, – 
from scoring touchdowns. And they scored one in the ball game, which is big. And an uh, offense like that that goes hurry up, you know, they're going to make some big plays. But our guys played well when we got in the red zone. Yeah, that's the key to the game. We got to win up front, and the guys know it. We put a lot of pressure on those guys up front, and uh, Coach Adam did a great job of uh, preparing those guys in fall camp. Defensively, again, you got to get – I, I want to see more quickness off the edge. I like Lewis. First quarter, Lewis, to me, was non-existent. I saw him get better as the game progressed, J.C. But the guy I want to talk about real quickly – it's Cooper. I saw Cooper making some plays even when he was chasing. I mean, he's an undersized defensive end, but I thought he played with great heart, and I thought he did well based on what I saw. I made sure I watched him. He's not a bad player. Is he SEC quality starter? Probably not, but at least he's playing hard. I, I'm with you, and I, I think Cooper handled himself, accounted yeah. for himself really well yeah. out, out on the field Thursday night. Lewis agreed. Mm -hmm. You know, it was after the first quarter where he settled in. Again, it's his first Division One college football game. Same with Dante Sawyer. Uh, you know, Darius English, when he was in there, I thought played well, looks like a better player. You know, David Johnson to me at that fourth end spot, you know, it may be a little weak, weak link right now. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, Cooper played pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Dante Sawyer played well as the game went on. Jonathan Walton at linebacker, probably not his best game, but Moore had a good game. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we'll just have to see how it goes. So many guys – uh, were playing for the first time. All of them were playing for the first time in the scheme. Right. Second, a lot of them were playing for the first time ever uh, at their positions. Right. Even Jordan Diggs, you know, who picked had a big early big pick. pickoff. Another big twenty-one um, year old. You know that guy. That guy's been a linebacker until mm -hmm. now. You know Isaiah Johnson, Kansas until mm -hmm. now. Uh, so it's a situation where I think we'll see kind of this defense. This defense needs to tighten up. Yeah. I, I think that's the key. It, 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 tighten up. And I think they'll have the confidence to do that, given what happened Thursday night. Whereas if they'd have lost, maybe not. Well, they're going to have to tighten up because they're going to face a really good Kentucky offense. I'm not going to say team, but a good offense is going to come in on Saturday. We'll get to that in just a moment. But when we come back, Brian Hanna, Spurs and Feathers, they got to get past a lot of injuries. Boy, that injury list is piling up. We'll talk about that with Brian after the break.